Hey guys, so a couple of you asked if I could do a video on my personal pros and cons when it comes to hamster keeping the goods and the bad sides of it. So that's what I'm going to do today and we're going to start off with the pros. My first pro for keeping hamsters is that they're relatively low maintenance pets. When it comes down to it, all you really need to do to keep your hamster happy is to make sure it has food and water, clean its cage out regularly, take it to the vets if it's sick, and of course make sure it has lots of toys and things to do in its cage to stop it from getting bored. If you do all of those things, your hamster should be happy and healthy, and you shouldn't really need to worry about anything else. The next great thing about hamsters is they're very clean animals. Now, lots of people think rodents in general are dirty. This is not true for the majority of rodents, but especially for hamsters. They love to keep themselves clean. You'll often see them washing their faces. They spend a lot of time washing their fur and grooming themselves. If you give them a sand bath, they'll roll in it to help them remove dirt and oils from their fur. And they just do everything they can to keep themselves clean. Lots of people are surprised to learn that you can even litter train most hamsters. Hamsters typically urinate in a corner of their cage rather than all over it and once you've found out where they're peeing you can actually put a litter tray there and encourage them to go in that it makes it a lot easier when it comes to cleaning hamster droppings have no odor at all so that is not something you need to worry about and even if you can't litter train your hamster as long as you're using a substrate with good odor control and making sure you spot clean every couple of days and obviously do a full clean out of the cage every couple of weeks then your hamster should not smell at all one of my favourite things about hamsters is they're really entertaining to watch. If you set up their cage in an area of your home that's easily viewable to everyone, then you can just sit down in front of their cage and watch them for hours. Honestly, you can spend so much time watching a hamster just go about its day. And this is fantastic if you're not someone who feels comfortable with handling your hamster, or if your hamster is untamable. It does happen sometimes. You don't have to worry about not getting any enjoyment out of your pet. You can just sit and watch them, kind of like a fairy goldfish. Generally speaking, once tamed hamsters are very good natured. They're not aggressive animals, they won't purposely come up to you to attack you. They would much rather run away from you and hide if they're scared. It is very rare to get an aggressive hamster, and usually if a hamster does have an aggressive nature, you'll know that before you even take it home. It will be very obvious from the beginning. So as long as you're picking a hamster that seems to be happy and healthily curious about you, then everything should be fine with it. Now this actually leads me on to my next point, which is that hamsters rarely bite. Now you do hear stories of people being bitten by their hamsters, but usually when you get bitten it's because you've done something wrong. Either you've scared your hamster or you've made your hamster feel threatened, even if you don't realise that you've done that. When you first get your hamster you have of course got to tame it and this can take from a couple of weeks to a few months to even longer than that sometimes, but if you rush into it you can scare your hamster and that can make them a little more jittery of you and that can end up with you getting bitten. My last personal pro about hamsters is all about the vets because just like any other animal when a hamster is sick or injured it has to go to the vets. That is the law in most countries, but it's also the right thing to do. It would be cruel not to take your hamster to the vet if it was sick or injured. But the great thing is, unlike larger animals like cats and dogs, when you take a hamster to a vet, it's not going to cost you an absolute huge amount of money. It will still cost a bit because you are still paying for medical treatment, but it's not going to cost you as much for an operation on a hamster as it would for an operation on a dog. And it's certainly not going to cost you as much for just basic things like antibiotics or ear drops or stuff like that general things that happen to go wrong with hamsters, it will not cost as much as it would for a larger animal, so that is a big positive. The other vet related pro when it comes to hamsters is they don't need vaccinations. You don't need to worry about taking them every couple of months or every couple of years to get vaccines, you don't have to worry about getting them microchipped, so those are costs you will never ever have to worry about. So I'm sure you figured out that my con list for hamsters was going to be pretty short. It really is. But my first con for hamsters is that they're generally more active at night time. They are crepuscular animals, some can be a little bit more nocturnal, and this just means they're usually more active around dawn, dusk, or in the middle of the night, oftentimes when their owners are fast asleep. So when you get a hamster, you do have to be aware of the fact that you're going to have to stay up a little bit later or get up a little bit earlier to interact with your animal. If you really, really, really love your sleep, then they're probably not going to be the best animal for you, especially as when a hamster is active, it is making noise, so that might disturb you, it might keep you awake. If you're a heavy sleeper, that's not something you need to worry about. But it's also not so great when it comes to young children, because obviously they go to bed early, um, they wake up early as well, but they're generally asleep when your hamster is the most active, so that is something to take into consideration. 
My other con when it comes to keeping hamsters as pets is that they are prone to stress-related illnesses. There are many different illnesses that can be triggered by stress, the most well-known one being wet tail. You do have to be very careful about keeping your hamster's environment as calm and as stress-free as possible, so if you live in a noisy home, if you're moving constantly, if your hamster wouldn't be able to stay calm and relaxed in its home, then it's probably a better idea to rethink having them as pets because they can get many different illnesses if they get too stressed. So that was my personal list of pros and cons when it comes to keeping hamsters as pets. If you have any personal pros and cons that you'd like to share with us, please feel free to in the comment section down below. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. They are linked in the description box along with some other information, I'm sure. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. You can also share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Lovely. I just had a 21st century derp out. Instead of putting all my notes on my iPod, I put them on an actual notepad this time. I wrote them down. But that didn't stop me trying to scroll my notepad. I actually did that and I'm very ashamed of myself. Rarely, rarely. The word re whenever I say rarely, there is always someone who hears the word rarely. <laughs> Which they sound the same, even I can hear. Rarely and rarely. Really, 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 really. I really like this thing. I really go to that place. I need to learn how to speak.